All right, everybody, I'm gonna be tying up a few different patterns uh, in this video. These are my variations of uh, zebra midges and chrominids. I've been using these on Crane Prairie in the early summer, um, a lot of success. I use red with the tungsten silver bead, uh, which is ultra wire uh, small silver. I'll be tying it on this more traditional kind of nymph or egg hook. Um, I'll also be tied on a longer uh, shank, like a 200 as well. Blood midge, chrominids, midges, you name it, whatever you want to call this, but extremely successful in the early summer, especially in this red color with silver on Crane Prairie. However, as you can see, I'll tie it in multiple colors. I really like black with silver. You can also add uh, the white beads that's a snow cone. Same fly, especially in the smaller versions. Uh, size 10s in the smaller, more traditional zebra midge style. Size 12s in this 200. You can variate that size depending on where you're fishing, but this is what I use um, with a lot of success. Anyways, I'm just gonna slide that tungsten bead on there, line up my hook as is. <clears throat> You could add lead wire here if you want to as well. I like a slimmer profile personally. Okay, right here I'm using 70 denier um, in red. And this right here is UTC. I really like it because it's flossy. And I'll start my thread. I'll go about halfway down the hook shank. And then I'm using ultra wire small silver. And I'm gonna get that wire tucked in all the way up into that bead on the top right right there and I'm gonna take that back to the front lock that down and then I'm gonna make touching wraps keeping this body as smooth as I can if I have to spin my thread do so to floss it out these flies are extremely fast to tie um, but extremely <laughs> extremely productive fly um, this is a great still water pattern anywhere but this particular size is what I use on Crane Prairie seems a little big but gosh I've had 30 fish days out there on these flies um, and I'm gonna take that about I don't know almost halfway down into the hook point now the reason why I'm not going all the way to halfway which I really like is because I'm gonna do a couple extra turns of wire down here just for aesthetic reasons but also to give it a little shinier uh, tag on the butt and then I'm going to come back up, touching wraps again. You can see just with my thread, I'm just creating a body. Now you could use floss if you wanted to, but that's just an extra step, which I don't want to do. I guess you could just tie it with floss as well. I'm going to go ahead and spin my thread, keep that body as smooth as I can. And um, That looks pretty good to me. And when I get to the front, I need to take up some space there. So you could do a few wraps. Now here's what I'm gonna do with my wire. I kind of pull it taunt. And loosely, I'm gonna do a couple wraps. One and two down the shank. Then on that second one, I'm gonna kind of pull it up and taunt. That kind of brings it all together. And then I'm gonna start doing um, just nice oh, uh, spiral even wraps up the body. You should get about, I don't know, five to six turns. There's one two, oops, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna bring that around right up to the front. And um, I'm gonna tie that off really, really well with some good locking turns. And then I like to always go behind that bead as well. Once I uh, get it locked off, I'm gonna break that wire off and then I'm just gonna do a couple of, uh, quite a few wraps in here. Just build up a thro uh, thread bulk to really seat that and go back a little bit. It's okay to get a nice little ramp here, a nice little head. You could add some dubbing here if you wanted to. A um, little peacock dubbing here would be nice. And then once I get it, kind of locked in there where that bead's locked. I'm just gonna do one or two maybe different um, whip finishes. There's one, 
and that's still a little loose. I don't like that even though I am going to glue that. So I'm going to come back up. I'm just going to really whip and finish that off to where it locks in that bead. That's still loose. Wow. I guess you could use... Um, I guess you could use 140 thread, just so you don't have to do as many wraps. But there we go, that's locked in there, I can fill it now. Once I pull that thread through, clean it up. If you have any loose fibers from this flossy thread, just cut it out of there. But honestly, the more this fly gets fished and kind of beat up like that, I think it works better. Um, but those little extra threads just pull out of there. But I'm just using a little penetrator cement from Hard as Hole. And, uh, I like to hit the thread wraps there, just real lightly. Let me get some on there, come on. Just real lightly like so, just kind of dip it around and spin it. However, I also like to hit the whole body because the fish are gonna beat this up and especially the back here. You really wanna get that back little um, wire because they're gonna mess that up. But like I said, the more this gets fished, the better it seems to uh, fish as it gets beat up. So make sure you have quite a few of these in your um, box just because uh, it is going to get fish it's going to get beat up and eventually you'll have to replace it once everything starts uh, coming off and then done but this is the smaller size 10 <laughs> smaller in the Sierra I would be tying these in size like 18s um, even 20s but um, great fly throw it underneath an indicator you can strip it um, I love it my setup is going to be this along with that longer one as well uh, and we're going to tie that one next. Exactly the same, it's just a longer hook, guys. And I'll show you right now. Now here's the other fly <clears throat> that I'll tie. And I'll usually have this one on top, this one on the bottom. Uh, anywhere from 12 inches to potentially like 18 inches below. Just depending on, um, you know, where I think the fish might be. And the idea is to try to cover water columns. Um, and you're doing that by spacing out your flies. And, um, you know, once you start finding fish, depending on which fly they're eating, you can determine kind of where they're at. Crane Prairie, for instance, uh, uh, even uh, lakes like, um, like, like Crowley Lake out of Mammoth Lakes area, um, you got to find those fish. Um, now, sometimes you could do that if you have a, a boat and a fish finder and that kind of stuff. However, if you're on a float tube, um, it's a little more difficult. However, even sometimes float tubes have those fish fighters. I've seen some fancy float tubes out there. But uh, once again, tungsten bead, eighth inch. This is a size 12 uh, TMC 200. You can get the Daiichi version, doesn't matter. Uh, small silver wire. Now one thing I'm gonna do, you can see I'm lifting my wire. I'm using that to slide you kind of pull up on it every now and then too. It slides all my thread forward so it's touching a little bit better. Now on this longer hook, you could do this on that other fly as well. Build a little ramp here, a little taper. Just wanted to kind of get that in there. And locked off, you know, to some extent. Boom, boom, boom. I am going to do a couple half hitches here because um, I'm going to use my rotary function, which for the wire sometimes is just a lot nicer, a lot easier. Especially um, with all those cameras and stuff in front of me. Anyways, I'm going to just use that right there, this little bobbin cradle. And uh, you could do this one like the other one, a little couple little fancy turns at the bottom but I don't care about that on this one this much because it's a much larger fly once again I tie this in black with silver bead silver wire I tie it in black with a snow cone or a white bead uh, with silver wire uh, also in red like that as well bring that right up to the front there and then I'm just gonna lock that off with a couple very um, tight locking turns there, boom. And then I come behind it as well. Just gives your fly a little more durability from that wire not coming out. But once I'm there, a couple locking turns once again. You can see just building a little ramp there. 
Checking my bead, it's still a little loose, even though I'm gonna tie this up and then glue it. I wanna make sure that bead's really set in there. I'm gonna do about two, and I can clean that up with glue, like I like you just saw there. Once again, I'm just using a, uh, I'm using the penetrator hardest hole. It's real thin. Get that back. Make sure you get that back.